keep coming for me. I'm going to air your ass out. I knew you'd been waiting. I knew you was going to come for me sooner or later. I knew you was going to come. You was itching. But I will King Kong your ass and the rest of them running with you. You ain't built for this. You ain't built for this. I stands my own ground. I don't need no team. I stands my own ground. I don't need no team. When you see Papa, you see Papa solo. I don't need nobody backing me up in order to manifest my God consciousness. I'm not you. Sit your weak ass down for I expose you. Facts. I got a lot on my chest, okay? I think I'm going to have to address these haters. I think in Brooklyn, I'm going to have to drop the Garvey grenade on these hating ass ho teppers who can't keep my name out their damn mouth. I think I'm going to have to do a who's who of Dr. Umar haters. That's right. A who's who of Dr. Umar haters in Brooklyn. I think I'm going to have to just, because they don't know how to stop. You Negroes don't know how to stop. You got some elders hating too. I don't know what y'all hating for. You understand? Not most of you, just one or two of you, all right? I'm trying to be respectful because I'm your child. I respect the fact that I'm your child, but I'm only going to take but so much like Garvey was W.E.B. Du Bois' child. W.E.B. Du Bois was 20 years older than the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. W.E.B. Du Bois was 20 years older than the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, but I'm not going to keep taking this anti-Umar shit too long, and I'm a King Kong conscious your ass. I don't care how old you is. Stop Hating. If you want the throne, come take it. I keep telling you, Negro. I'm outworking you. Forget the degrees. Forget the intellect. Forget the oratory. Forget the scholarship. I'm outworking you, Negroes. Y'all don't work. All y'all do is hustle consciousness. Nine out of every ten of you is a black power pimp. A black power pimp. And you mad at me because I'm putting work in. How many kids you kept out of special ed? How many black parents you saved? How many prisons you went into and helped out? How many superintendents call you up when they don't know what to do? How many suicide attempts you didn't stop? You understand me? Put the work in. I put the work in. So don't compare me to them. Negroes talking about, oh, he pimping. $20 a lecture. I'm pimping. Really? Do you know out of that, I got to pay venue, I got to pay insurance, I got to pay insurance, I got to pay my staff, I got to get my rental car, my hotel, as well as my flights. Are you serious? Do you know when I come across the waters to Africa and Asia, I do not charge? You understand? You talking to a doctor here, not no hotel hustler. You talking to a doctor, six degrees count them, Negro. So you add up the hourly fee of a doctor of clinical psychology who's a school psychologist. So let's put that at 125 an hour. Let's put that at 125 an hour. I'm a lowball you. Now I want you to calculate all the time I spent in Africa. I want you to calculate all the time I spent in Asia. All the different countries. I want you to calculate the times I spend on my Tuesday morning call. Calculate all the free help. Calculate the National Independent Black Parent Associate. I want you to calculate that. And you don't even have to do 24 hours a day. Let's just do 8 hours a day. Calculate my 125 professional wage and I'm lowballing you. Because with my credentials, it's 250 and up. I'm lowballing you. I'm lowballing it. And I want you to calculate that times the amount of time I put into our people and see if I'm coming up in the red or if I'm coming up in the blue. That's right, brothers and sisters. You can't begin to pay me for what I done done. You can't begin to calculate the time put in for Dr. Umar Johnson. So stop this shit. Stop this shit. Stop this shit. Okay? Cut it out. You, and it ain't about no compensation because this is about struggle, baby. I know this is sacrifice. I know this is sacrifice. I knew this was sacrifice before I got in it, family. I knew this was sacrifice. And guess what? I offer it gladly. If Malcolm could offer it, why can't I? If Mega could offer it, why can't I? Emmett Till could offer it, why can't I? Trayvon can offer it. Michael Brown could offer it. Sandra Bland could offer it. Eric Garner, Philando Castile can offer it. The nine brothers and sisters in that church in Charleston can offer it. I don't want no payment. I don't want no accolades. I don't want no thank you. You can't pay me for what I do. The best payment is to know I helped out a fellow African. The best payment is to know that I'm doing something to move my people forward. Marcus Garvey said we should never go to sleep without doing something to move our people forward. We got the National Independent Black Parent Association 4th Regional Conference in Detroit. 
June 9th and 10th. I hope to see some of y'all there. Detroit, June 9th and 10th. I'm hoping to see some of y'all there because we got to organize. We got to organize. We just can't talk about this. We got to do the work. We got to do the work. You Negroes ho tapping on my name. I've done more to save black children in the United States of America than all you black scholars, bougie and hoteppers. Put together, I've done more. Put together, single-handedly, I have rescued the black community from the trappings of special ed. Single-handedly, by myself, I've rescued the black community from ADHD. Single-handedly, I have taught more black parents their rights than any scholar before me or living. Do the research. More than any scholar before me or living when it comes to the miseducation machine. Hell wrong with y'all. Comparing me to them hustling ass black power pimps. Give me a break. And, and, and let me say this real quick because and I'm going to have to do a video on this, but we got to handle this. Just because your religion borrowed aspects of African culture, don't make your religion African. Let me say this again. Just because your religion plagiarized or stole or borrowed aspects of African culture, that does not make your religion African. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with your religion. It don't make it bad. Okay, I respect all religions. I think they can all be used for good. But don't make your religion, don't try to say your religion is African because you plagiarize certain aspects of African culture. Now, I'm going to keep this real brief, but there's four essentials that you must meet in order for your religion to be African. And if your religion don't meet all four of these essentials, your religion is not African. Ashe, Ashe. Ashe, so let me give you the four. Number one, in order for your religion to be an African religion, it must, it must embrace the concept of both masculine and feminine divinity. If your religion does not embrace the concept of both masculine and feminine divinity, then it's not African, period. If your religion rejects the feminine principle of spirituality, then your religion is not African. I don't give a damn who you is. I don't give a damn who you is. African spirituality, African culture is based on the complementarity of opposites. The male and the female. God is not a man or a woman. God is not a he or she. But supreme consciousness is the manifester of both divine feminine and masculine energy. So in order for your religion to be African, it must embrace both the he and the she of metaphysical divine energy. That's number one. That's number one. If your religion is all he or all she, it ain't African because there's no balance. And in order to be African, you must be balanced. In order to be African, you must be balanced. That's number one. Number two, in order for your religion to be African, it must embrace African divination. African divination. That is the belief that we are all born with a certain purpose and the only way, the only way to reach a higher consciousness of your purpose is to have the priests and priestesses divine for you. Call on the divine energies to open up your road so they can see what it is you need to be doing now to make sure you achieve your destiny. Prayer is important. Fasting is important. Okay? Religious deep thought is important. But in order for it to be African, it must embrace divination. It must embrace divination. Number three, in order for your religion to be African, it must embrace sacrifice. Sacrifice. All African spiritual systems, there must be the drawing of blood Occasionally, ashe, in order for you to reap greater ashe. In other words, you must give before you can get. There must be blood offerings. You must give before you can get. 
Dr. King died so you could vote. Frederick Douglass died so you could be free. Marcus Garvey died so Africa could be liberated. There is no such thing as freedom without a cause. There is no such thing as getting from God without giving to God. So if you don't have a balanced masculine and feminine principle, if you don't embrace blood offering, if you don't believe in divination, then your religion ain't African. Number four, number four, in order for your religion to be African, it must teach. It must teach. It must teach that you have God within you and that understanding is better than unders. You must understand. You must reach the God that is already within you. African spirituality teaches that supreme consciousness takes up house in ourselves. So African consciousness is about the belief that you go inside to meet God. You don't have to go to the imam. You ain't got to go to the priest. You ain't got to go to the pastor. You got to do the inner work. You got to do the inner work. You have to access the God within. African culture believes that between us and God is a pantheon of spiritual energies that God created as a spiritual ladder. You know how you climb the ladder? You have to climb the ladder. You have to climb the ladder. Well, African spirituality teaches that there's a spiritual ladder that you have to climb in order to get to the great palace of supreme consciousness. And you ain't climbed that ladder yet. You ain't climbed that ladder yet. And let me give you one more. Let me give you one more. Bust it wide open. Let me bust it wide open with one. Let's bust it wide open. Bust this shit all wide open. Trying to wash your religion and African culture in order to legitimize and validate your religion. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. In order for your religion to be African, it must ascribe to and embrace African ancestral veneration. Facts. Facts. In order for your religion to be African, it must ascribe to and embrace African ancestral veneration. That's right. We don't worship our ancestors. We venerate with our ancestors because we came from God through our ancestors. So any religion that does not teach you to build a relationship with your living dead, any religion that does not teach you to build a relationship with your living dead is not an African religion. That's right. We're taught that the ancestors sit at the feet of God. The ancestors sit at the feet of God. The ancestors sit at the feet of supreme consciousness by whatever name you choose to call it. Whether it's God, Allah, Jehovah, Chukwu, Amin Ra, Olu Dumare, Olurun. God sends the ancestors to intervene on behalf of their living descendants. If your religion does not honor our ancestors, if your religion does not pay homage to our ancestors, if your religion does not teach the children ancestral veneration, then your religion ain't African. Now you go intellectually masturbate that, you damn hater. I see you throwing shots. Keep coming for me. I'm going to air your ass out. I knew you'd been waiting. I knew you was going to come for me sooner or later. I knew you was going to come. You was itching. But I will King Kong your ass and the rest of them running with you. You ain't built for this. You ain't built for this. I stands my own ground.